Welcome, it's indisputable, good to be with you. We have a lot on the agenda today. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking down news of the day with me, none other than my dear sister, Nina Turner, former Ohio State Senator, TYT contributor, and got some new things coming out as well. Everybody should pay attention to the great Nina Turner. We will have that in just a moment. Let me go to my first story. Uh, this is horrific. A firefighter decides to kick a mentally disabled homeless individual. Here's the video. Now I want you to pay attention to a few things in that video. Number one, it was a firefighter who decided to kick this mentally disabled individual. And it was noted that the person had something going on, did not care. This firefighter is supposed to be a mixed martial artist. Now, I don't know martial arts. I do know that part of the training is discipline, is conduct. Values are at the core of any martial arts training program. Well, this wannabe badass decided, hey, let me show all of my colleagues what I can do with my martial arts skills. So you think you get points, buddy, for kicking? A disabled individual who's already on the ground is ridiculous. But also notice how nobody intervened, how nobody said, wait, guy, stop. You're a firefighter, what are you doing? This individual is supposed to be a first responder for medical attention, fires, etc., to help. But he kicks, he kicks a person who's already on the ground. Where I'm from, you get no points for that whatsoever. Let me give you some background to this story, a Dallas firefighter who is a trained martial artist, kicked a mentally disabled man in the face, then punched him repeatedly after he was detained for allegedly lighting a roadside grass fire. The Dallas Observer obtained body cam video of the incident in which Kyle Vess was kicked and punched by Dallas Fire Rescue employee Brad Cox before being tased by police officers. So the one two combination, ladies and gentlemen, the one two combination, a kick from a firefighter and then a taser from a cop. This is now suing Cox in the city of Dallas, alleging excessive force and a lack of training on dealing with mentally ill or homeless people. The 2019 incident, remember, this happened in 2019. We now have the video, there's now a lawsuit, but the incident happened in 2019. The 2019 incident left this man with a fractured orbital socket and sinus, as well as cracked teeth. According to his attorney, his face is now numb and the right side of his body trembles. The incident reportedly worsened Vess's existing mental disability, which resulted from a, from a previous traumatic brain injury. Wow. Nina? Sister, this is horrific, even if he did not have the pre-existing brain injury. Now, injury on top of injury, firefighters teaming up with cops. Yeah, in some of the worst ways possible. I mean, look, at some of the most highly regarded professions, nurses, teachers, and firefighters. Yeah. And this firefighter is definitely taking it to a whole nother level of low. And not only do certain communities have to worry about the police, now it looks like we have to worry about firefighters. You know, this is, it is a shame. And as you laid out, the, the, the gentleman already had some exacerbating conditions and this just made it worse. And not only does he not, the firefighter get zero points, we're gonna put him in the negative for doing this. I hope that Mr. Kyle Vess wins his lawsuit and that 
people are fired and others should be held accountable for just standing around. You cannot just stand around and allow your colleague to do whatever they want. And doc, you talk about this all the time on your show. This wasn't part of protocol. Yeah. This person just decided that they were going to do this to this young man just because they wanted to, just because they had the authority. Again, what is done in our name? Taxpayer dollars are paying for the salaries here and people should be held accountable. But one more point, training. Training is important in terms of dealing with people who may have mental illnesses, who may be going through an episode, got it. But there should not have to be any training for some basic human decency to treat somebody with respect. So some of this stuff, you know, they 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 taking the blame on training a little too far in my book. I agree with you 100%. I think the whole notion of we need to do better training. We need to make sure we have more diversity training, more sensitivity training, bull. No, no, I, I, I'm good with it, but that is not going Tire to solve your people. problem, right? That's right. Your, your problem is cultural. And That's as it. long as it remains cultural, it doesn't matter what training they have. And if you look back at these guys background, they got plenty of training, plenty of it. They simply don't bring it to the field because the culture is antithetical to the training and the decent logic and sense they have before they get there. All right. Okay, let me shift. Um, Michael Flynn, this was really interesting. Michael Flynn said that the vaccine is going to be in your salad dressing. Now, let me say this we researched it. Even though he's wrong, there is some research happening around plants. And a vaccine, but here's what Michael Flynn said. You know, somebody sent me a thing this morning where they're talking about putting the vaccine into salad dressing or salads. Have you seen this? Yes. Have you seen this? I mean, it's and I'm and I'm thinking to myself, this is the bizarre world, right? This is <laughs> definitely the bizarre world. So there's the seriousness of what this what this professional realized he was doing wrong, and he and he's now you know he's found a new way, and then there's the there's just the laughability on the other extreme that people are, I mean, these people are seriously thinking about how to impose their will on us in our society. And it's, and it's- Take away your freedom of choice. Okay, so remember Michael Flynn, the guy who admitted to being corrupt, received a pardon, was a national security advisor, but lied on his application about what his true interests were, that guy. Michael Flynn is now a QAnon believer. He talks about extreme conspiracy theories on a regular basis. He has even insinuated that it is okay to kill people who do not agree with you. That Michael Flynn. I did a little research here. I have a great team and this is interesting. While Michael Flynn intentionally decided to be misleading, we will give you the full story. Here's the story, COVID-19 is not being put into salad dressing, COVID-19 vaccine, not being put into salad dressing, nor has anyone proposed such a thing. However, similar mRNA vaccines could be grown in edible plants like lettuce. And that is something that is now being actively researched. A few days before Flynn made this comment, the University of California Riverside published a news release about a research program that was attempting to turn edible planet plants, excuse me, like lettuce into mRNA vaccine factories. UCR said that the National Science Foundation had provided a $500,000 grant to pursue the research. One of the problems with the current COVID-19 vaccine and similar mRNA vaccines is that they need to be stored at cold temperatures. If the program is successful, this new vaccine making vegetable would basically solve the temperature issue. That's the genesis of what the research is for. Michael Flynn gets a hold of it and says, ah, they're putting COVID vaccine in salad dressing. And then the guy on the radio station or podcast, whatever the hell it was, he said, "Oh yeah, 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 I got that same memo. You're a damn lie. That memo never went out. Nobody ever said that. But this is how it continues to permeate. And they continue to validate their own lies to each other in real time. There is no memo saying there's a COVID-19 vaccine inside of salad dressing. Uh, Nina Turner, you've been in positions before 
where people have made up just ridiculous things, completely intentionally misguided those that put trust in them. This is nothing new. No, not at all, Doc. And and the and Mr. Flynn knows better than that. He could have did a little research too to find out what the truth was, but the truth does not comport itself with the story he wants to tell. Right. You know, I had a friend who always said, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. They are adding to vaccine hesitancy. We know we have a crisis with that in this country. And it just, it is an absolute shame to have somebody who once was led folks, misleading mm -hmm. folks right now. Uh, with this information, and you know, not to make light of this doc, but I'm just saying, putting it in salad dressing. Now they research and let us, let the science community does do what it does. But but I would say, put it in the sweets, you know, cakes. <laughs> let me tell you, might you have a better chance of people taking it. Then. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm having a light moment. I just want people to know that. Don't yeah, misread I, this. Listen, um, let me but, tell you. For, but yeah, he's myself. somebody that once led folks is now deliberately yeah, misleading being, people. Being ridiculous. You know, yeah. my biggest vice is sweet tea. I'm from the south. <laughs> Don't judge me, okay? <laughs> All right. You know, maybe a semblance of justice here. A young man kicked in the face, stumped by police, where charges are forthcoming. Let me remind you of the video. Here it is. Take your seatbelt off. Seatbelt off. Okay, okay, okay. I'm down. I'm down. I'm not resisting. Oh, oh, oh. Get off. I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting. Yeah, you are. Oh, Give him your hand. Oh, Give him your hand. 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 Oh, here, here, here. I'm on. I'm done. I got one. Give him your other hand. Ow! Ow! Ow. Give him your hand. Ow! 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 Here's the update. Two Central California police officers have now been indicted. Put up a picture of what they did to this young man. Okay, if you look closely, you will literally see a boot print in his face. A stamp, if you would. Devin Carter was pulled over in North Stockton on December 30th, 2020 for driving erratically according to the report, okay? At a speed faster than 100 miles per hour. The team led officers on a brief chase, during which an officer collided with a citizen's vehicle before officers successfully used the pit maneuver to stop Carter and use force to arrest him. Former Stockton Police Department officers, Michael Stiles and Omar Villapudua had previously been fired in March after it was determined that the force they used against the 17 year old kid, Devin Carter, was completely outside of department policy. Four officers were involved in the arrest, but only two so far have been indicted. Let me show you a picture of the police chief. His name is Eric Jones, there he is. He's the supervisor, he's the guy in charge. The buck stops with him, 17 year old kid, we see the video initially, everybody says, "Oh, there's no crime here. He should not have been uh, leaving the scene. We would not have had to do this. Here's the thing, I'm so sick and tired of, pe of people talking about, well, why, why wouldn't he just comply at first? That does not excuse criminal activity of the officer. I wanna remind you, the 17 year old took no oath to uphold the law. He has a responsibility to but not an oath to. The cops took an oath to uphold the law. That's number one. Number two, we pay for those cops. We don't pay for Devin. Taxpayer funds those police officers, okay? They are accountable and responsible to the public trust. 
that has been placed inside of them. Okay, now Nita Turner, you saw this. Obviously, a decent update. I think all four cops should be indicted, but two of them have been indicted based on what was presented. It is a decent update. Again, 17 years old. Yep. He is a young a young man, a kid. And a lot of times black children or black young people do not get the same type of empathy and or sympathy, respect of life as other people's children. They're just treated any old kind of way. Law enforcement officers are not supposed to be judge, jury and executioner. That's that right. is why we have a court system in place and under no circumstances. Or and especially in this circumstance, should an arrest lead to a beating that leaves a 17 year old boy with a boot mark in his face. Every justice loving American should be outraged by this. Yeah, and everybody who loves the Constitution, right? Yes. Uh, because the Constitution talks about due process. That's and it. if you love the Constitution, you also have to love that clause that says everyone must must have the benefit of due process. When you have a cop showing up like this and basically dishing out punishment when they are simply supposed to apprehend because we are all innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. When you have this violation of the public trust and elimination of due process in the practice of policing, why are those on the right that love their damn constitution so much not outraged? All right, we got more, it's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. Always good to have you. We got a lot of comments. Thank you for engaging the show. Let me first read some things that will interest you. New members only. So if you're not a new member, you need to become one. All right. New new members only show featuring um, Senator Nina Turner debuts when today after the young, uh, the young Turks. Tune in to Power Hour. Look at that superhero. That's actually her inner spirit that she gave us for that graphic. Tune in to Power Hour with Nina Turner, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time on Thursdays. We are so blessed, so fortunate to have Nina Turner at TYT. Speak truth to power, fight the power, get the power, use the power. Power Hour with Senator Nina Turner, Jank Ugar. Listen, this is going to be a, a crazy combination, first of all. Um, but in order to get it, I need y'all to do something. You gotta sign up now, okay? Go to tyt.com slash join, tyt.com slash join. It's real simple, real easy. Also, uh, don't forget tomorrow, yeah, a special XL bullpen, full debate, Charlie Kirk. Turning Point USA, I went to Phoenix, Arizona. I'm not bragging, but I will say this. I came, I saw, I conquered. We recorded this last week called Debate Night with Charlie Kirk. I cannot wait for you all to see that. So make sure you are with us tomorrow. And we're now on podcast, we're everywhere, Acast, Apple, Spotify, so you can take this show anywhere you go and have all of these great, great I wish a Karen Woods or the bullpen news of the day. All of that is right there. Make sure you follow and give us five stars, okay? All right, let's get to some of these amazing comments. TYT member Just Be Anti Racist says, Dr. Richie, I ordered my son the I wish a Karen Wood tea and we received it yesterday in the mail. My son wore it to school today. He is so proud of his indisputable Karen T. And he wore it to school. And tell your son I said this, okay? The first teacher who complains about his shirt, that is Karen. All right? Alaskan Snow Dragon. There is no martial art teacher in the world who would approve of this. I hope his sensei reads him the riot act or just kick his ass. I mean, that's what they do, they fight. So, you know, let's spar. Uh, Kelly O'Hara, my poet says, Michael Flynn singing ballads about vaccines spiking all the salads. 
is peak Q nutty, <laughs> creamy goodness. I'm more than overjoyed to witness new ranch French Thousand Island and Caesar. Now with 5G to make us receivers. <laughs> that was good. Because at first they were saying it was 5G technology, now it's salad dressing. It's not even in the same ballpark, okay? Um, Land of 10,000 ring says, um, sighing here. My judo instructors 50 years ago uh, were so adamant we were learning a sport, not violence. Now I need a Flynn salad from Trump Tumbling Towers. <laughs> uh, Mickey C the Silver Hair Dragon, stumbling on his face while his face was pressed against the road could have caused more than broken bones. He could have had a concussion or permanent brain damage. You are absolutely correct. That's why uh, medical professionals and police, they call that a red zone because it can cause serious injury or even death. Uh, YouTube Super Chat, Jim Adelberg. Turn and Richie, best combo on YouTube. Really, I think it's the best combo anywhere, um, YouTube included. Thank you for that. Uh, and thank you for your generosity. Trudy Lawrence, Dr. Richie going to get my <laughs> going to get my tea. Everyone, get your tea with this southern gentleman. Yes. Not a bad idea. Uh, Nicolette Horatis, uh, Doc. I was invited to our local university to discuss police accountability. I found myself channeling you and what landed the hardest with the audience was when you call the cops, you call a gun. Thank you, my pleasure and thank you for doing what you do. Um, Progressive aka Maple Syrup Dragon, love the show, thank you for all you do. Nina, always awesome to see you on the TYT network. So you are going to be in for a treat because she is here. Harpis 18I8, outstanding information of the highest respect. Thanks. My pleasure. Our pleasure. Um, Holly Todd, uh, they are testing the meme. There is no song called F the Fire Department. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that, that is funny and absolutely true. Um, all right. Uh, C3339409. You're anti-vax, but you'll eat processed, prepackaged, fast food. Yeah. Um, bed, head, and bean. 50% of police brutality cases are disabled, mainly disabled black people. Uh, Celtic Dragon, martial art is also supposed to be used for defense of self or others. That's true. Uh, not assault and bullying, 100% true. Um, Twitch, Mike Boy raps. Yeah, you can't kick. A downed opponent in MMA either against the rules. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel right. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Oh, I'm the man. Okay, we have to reserve the right to refuse privacy. That doesn't work for medical reasons. She doesn't. If I have a disability, that doesn't work for disability. What's your name, baby? What's your name, baby? Can you please leave? No, I cannot please leave. You can call the police. You can call the police. We'll call the police. You have no right to refuse service to me. I cannot wear a mask. I cannot wear a mask. So you wouldn't let a veteran come here because he can't wear a mask? Absolutely not, because it is. Do you know it's it's a gay car safety and health guidelines? No, it's not. No, it's not. Thank you. Under the 1964 Civil Rights Act, I demand equal access. And I will be calling the police. I will be calling the police. I have PTSD. Wow. Um, there's more, but first, let me just remind you, she says, I'm calling the police. There is no mandate here, I'm PTSD, and I am invoking the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Here's more video. Can we get your business card? Oh, okay. You can leave. Relax. 
Do not touch come me. in our area. You cannot come in our area. Touch me. Do not touch walk up on me. You just touch me. You just touch me. Get out of here. You just touch me. Get out of here. You just touch me. Bye. 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 And that's Fauci's own research. Bye, you Don't look sued. at it. You will Bye. be sued. Bye. You will Thank be you. sued. Bye. I have PTSD. Bye. I have Thank PTSD, you. and you're discriminating you. against me. As a black person, you should be ashamed. As a black person, you should be ashamed. That was a wonderful day, guys. 60 years ago, you couldn't drink from the same water fountain as me. And now you're discriminating against me. I mean, Karen coming in with reverse psychology, Jedi mind tricks, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, PTSD. What else you got, Karen? Oh, 911. I mean, Karen is throwing everything because obviously this must be the best damn Roscoe's chicken and waffles in the world. Yeah, they're at Roscoe's chicken and waffles in Orange County. Ma'am, you got Uber Eats. You got DoorDash, you got all kind of ways to get that damn chicken special out of Roscoe's. But they didn't come there for the chicken special. Now, notice she's talking about civil rights to a black manager who's literally wearing a Juneteenth t-shirt, okay? I'm sure the woman knows a little something about not only the struggle, but since she's a black woman and has been black um, for I don't know how many years, maybe her entire damn life. She knows a little something about being black too. But the audacity of this Karen, once again, the Karenicity running deep. Ms. Turner, thoughts? Like I really do need, I wish a Karen would, my t-shirt, which is coming <laughs> soon for today. Cause you're right, this woman threw everything and the water fountain. Yeah. I mean, and the water fountain. You were, I don't believe they came in there for the chicken. They they came in there to start mess. Right. They, they really did to, to create a scene, make an episode, and to start pure unadulterated mess. But it's, it's really getting deep. You know, from this Karen uh, quoting the 1964 Civil Rights Act all the way to saying to her, you know, 50 years ago, you would have been drinking from a different water fountain. You know, you asking for a lot more than to get served some chicken. Yeah. They came in with an agenda, obviously, they wanted to go to an establishment um, that was anti-mask. And by the way, um, settled case law as well as statutorily, businesses do have the right to enforce things like no shoes, no shirt, no service. That can also include, right, no no gun, no mask, okay? Uh, This has not been an issue. As a matter of fact, Republicans typically were the ones saying that these were rights of particular companies. And now because it doesn't fit their narrative, they're now saying companies should not have the right to enforce the laws traditionally they have actually supported. So it's really weird, ironic and hypocritical how their entire narrative, their political platform has shifted because of a mask issue. Companies have the right to do exactly what they're doing to protect customers and their establishment. Let me take you to Memphis. In Memphis, a woman involved in a violent 2020 arrest claims that she had a miscarriage following the encounter. Let me take you to the video then I will give you background. Here it is. Oh my God, they literally just called for backup on this girl. Get 
this is um, it's really hard to watch. And the woman miscarried after this. She committed no crime. As a matter of fact, she was a victim of another crime before this crime happened to her. Let me give you the background. This is out of Tennessee. Uh, Miss Keisha Gray, uh, who previously filed a lawsuit against Shelby County Sheriff and the county itself. Here's the backstory to this ordeal. She and her fiance had been driving down the street looking for real estate. When they got into an argument, <clears throat> arguments happened, nothing criminal about it. Gray got <clears throat> out of the car to cool off and walk down the road. Sometimes that's a wise decision. According to a copy of the lawsuit, witness Chris Hodge, I want you to remember that name. Chris Hodge, who reported the alleged domestic abuse, made up a story that involved extreme violence and attempted kidnapping. Hodge, according to the report here, according to the filing, also pulled up to Gray's fiance's vehicle, brandished a gun and instructed him to leave, according to the suit. Shortly after threatening the life of the fiance, Hodge, Chris Hodge, the witness who made the false allegation, according to the lawsuit, Hodge called emergency services and concocted an elaborate domestic assault that he described as an attempted kidnapping that involved extreme physical violence to include but not limited to a headlock, choking, punching. He said this and according to the report, he did it to make it justified for him pulling out his firearm. I mean, damn, that's diabolical. And he did it according to the report, just in case the plaintiff or her fiance reported him to law enforcement. So this cat pulls out a gun, tells them to leave, you gotta go. And then calls 911, makes up a crazy story to justify pulling out his gun in case he gets in trouble. And what happens next? You saw the video, um, a witness recorded the deputies confronting Gray. Uh, this dear sister, according uh, to the suit, she uh, miscarried after that, violently arrested, was charged with multiple crimes, even though she committed none, none. And they took her to jail and charged her. Uh, let's put up a picture of the police chief, cause they playing games about releasing the names of these cops. Let's put up a picture of the chief of Shelby County. Uh, his name is Floyd Bonner Jr. Now I've told you this before, keep this picture up. They keep playing this game where they protect cops who engage with citizens like this. They don't wanna tell us everybody, they don't wanna give us pictures. Fine, we'll put the picture of the boss up. All right, that's how we'll do it from now on. Ms. Turner, horrific. Definitely excessive force all the way around. And there was no probable cause as I can tell. And the camera is not lying. She was very cool, calm and collected, as you said. I think it was it was wise of her to say, I'm gonna get out the car and go walk. But you know what, Dr. Crime, she committed, and it was some lyrics in a Ice Cube song, you know, my skin is my sin. Yeah. That's not, that was her crime, and it continues to be the crime of millions of African Americans across this country. This is absolutely systemic, the way that law enforcement operates in this country. It is aided and abetted. So I'm glad that you keep the chief's pictures up. And we must have not only a paradigm shift, but a total transformation on policing in the United States of America and what true public safety looks like. They did a disservice. They actually infringed on her rights to be yeah. in that space in that place and to actually be able to walk around. And her saying she was pregnant, they didn't give a damn about that. Oh no, they told her to shut shut her mouth. Shut up, you yeah, shut and that would have triggered me too. You don't talk yeah. to no, especially. You, you know, you don't talk to no woman like that, especially a black woman. Yeah. Tell her Pregnant. to shut up like she a child. Yeah, and, and had not committed any violation of law whatsoever, but not still was all. charged with multiple violations of law. Uh, and just uh, for the record, um, this woman says none of that happened that the witness says happened. Uh, there's no other witness saying it. And she was victimized, in my opinion, multiple times here. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stay.
Yep, welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Let me read some of these amazing comments. Uh, TYT member Sir Wyatt Hill, the only medical condition that Karen had is being a Republican. <laughs> it is, right? Has to be. Lynn, you won't let a veteran spread COVID in your business? That's basically what she was saying. Um, Yeah, Mickey C the silver hair dragon. Oh my God, I remember when that happened. Uh, she was stopped for walking while black cops couldn't wait for the baby to be born to murder. YouTube super chat, Mike V. Uh, in the famous words of public enemy, by the time I get to Arizona. Beast nation 2009, the fire department of fascist must have studied martial arts at Cobra Kai. You gotta know some history, some cinema history to know about that. Good point, um, Stephen Turner. Uh, purely from a medical perspective, it's it's simply impossible to mitigate, let alone manage a global pandemic, while simultaneously dealing with an epidemic of narcissism. <laughs> of course, these carers would. Yep, and thank you for that kindness. Um, Dexy eighty three, no shirt, no shoes, no mask, no service. Nikio, thank you, Nikio. Um, Nana Nikki, this is horrific. Why are these cops chasing a pregnant black woman? And where's the right wing outrage over the loss of a fetus? Pro lifer should be all over this, right? She doesn't fit the narrative. She does not fit the narrative. But if they had intellectual integrity, yes, they will be all over it, but they do not. Uh, David, Theo, Dr. Richie is the GOAT. Indisputable has become my favorite program of any platform. Your insight, intellect, and true empathy shine through every day. We love you, Doc. We see you. Don't ever stop. And David, I thank you for that. And uh, I love you back. We love you back. Esther, is it Brochen? I think a baby was murdered to justify his crime. What a freaking monster! Uh, Donkey teeth. Is it Beatles? PTSD isn't covered by the Disability Act. Um, bread in to toast. I mean, Roscoe's is damn good. <laughs> I was saying something like that during the break myself. Okay, um, YouTube super chat, Jeremy Atkins. Dr. Ritchie, uh, you just proved in your last debate that the Bible says, uh, should a man cause a pregnant woman to a miscarriage, he should be fined with a fee. Uh, the pro-lifers uh, could at least mention a lawsuit, yeah? Uh, Jeremy Atkins, uh, one more thing, Doc. When can I get a copy of that Smith and Western Bible? Shots were fired, did she survive? <laughs> That's that's funny. Um, Billy St. Amper, um, did white privilege um, kill Gabby, the, the young lady in the news? Uh, they had been stopped after a report of physical, but a physical or physical altercation, but were able to explain it away and continue their trip. Um, yeah. This is one of the saddest stories that you will hear. A true miscarriage of justice. A cop walks up to a homeless man, puts him under arrest, says he's another person that has a warrant. The homeless man doesn't have ID. He's saying, no, 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 whoever you're saying I am, I'm not that person. The cop says, no, 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 you are the person. It's you, we're gonna take you to jail, you have a warrant for your arrest. This guy stays in a mental institution for two years. Because they thought he was mentally disabled. They thought he was having a break with reality only because he kept telling them, I am not the man you think I am. Let me bring your attention to Honolulu. Let's put up a picture of Mr. Joshua Spreesterbach. Mr. Spreester Bach fell asleep on a sidewalk. It was a hot day, it was May 2017. While waiting for food outside of a Honolulu homeless shelter. He woke up to a police officer arresting him for violating the city's ban on lying down in public. At least that's what Mr. Spreester Bach thought. The officer actually arrested him because he believed the man was Thomas Castleberry, who had an arrest warrant for allegedly violating probation 
in a 2006 drug case. It was the first mistake of many. Now, let me pause on this point. The arresting officer made a mistake. But I want to remind you that multiple authorities, multiple agencies, courts, prosecutors, public defenders, mental health directors, they all sign off on the same mistake throughout the entire system. You know why? Because they didn't give a damn. That's why he had no voice, not to them. They just said, "Oh, put him full of medication. That's the problem. Let's give him psychotropic medicine. He'll come back, he'll become Mr. Castleberry. But he never did. For two years, he proclaimed who he truly was, okay? Um, it was the first mistake of many that led to this man spending two years and eight months in jail and a mental institution for crimes he never committed. While locked up, doctors pumped him full of powerful psychiatric drugs. Judges ruled that he was unfit to stand trial and his attorneys ignored his assertions that the police had the wrong man. His own counsel didn't believe him. You know why? Because once again, they did not give a damn about him. He has no status to them. To them, he has no real value. You know how they found out this was really the wrong guy? A medical director, one of the people who actually sat down with him, a psychiatrist, really broke the whole thing and said, wait a minute. Some of this doesn't really seem traditional as it relates to a dysfunction in your psychological development. So he Googled, looked some, looked some stuff up. Damn, not the same guy. Let me take you to this part. They could have compared social security numbers. They didn't. He gave it to them. Mr. Spreesterbach said, hey, here's my social. With the one on the warrant, they could have compared it to Castleberry and realized they didn't match. They didn't even care about this man's social security number. Or they could have done a quick search of the internet and public court records to find out the real Castleberry had been locked up in Alaska since 2016. They didn't even do that. Instead, they did absolutely nothing. That's according to the Innocent Project. Innocence Project got on this and did a lot of great work. Uh, January 2nd, 2020, one of the doctors who previously found uh, Mr. Spreester Bach mentally incompetent changed course, changed their mind. And after doing a little more investigation, determined that this man had been telling the truth all along. That led the state hospital's attorney to have a police detective take fingerprints. They didn't match the ones they had on file for Mr. Castleberry. Officials also compared photos. Guess what? Photos did not match. All they had to do was pause for 60 seconds and say, okay, let's just confirm fingerprint, a picture, social security number, a records check. We could find out that Mr. Castleberry was already incarcerated. We could have found that out, they could have as well. But it shows you systemic failures in the system. Because if this was a mistake, and if the system only gets it wrong every now and then, that eight, nine, 10 layers on top of that mistake would have found it out. It would have been exposed, it would have been discovered. But when there's a systemic culture of failure because of the perceived class and status of an individual, the entire chain works against you. Because the failure is not a mistake, the failure is systemic. This is one of the best examples of systemic oppression and failure that I've seen in a long time. You had literally over 80 people that touched this man's case. And over 80 people said the same thing and all of them were wrong. Ms. Turner? I mean, Doc, you know, in the black church, when, when the sermon is good, you just say amen. <laughs> amen. To what you just said, you know, I was sitting here as we, you know, reading that article until we got to the point where they said they finally took the man's fingerprints. I'm thinking to myself, are fingerprints still unique to each yeah. individual? They didn't even bother because class, 
And yep. cast is exactly what you said. In this case, it was class. That's right. Do not care. The system is designed not to care about people of a certain social economic status. And this, as you said, was a great bad example of what happens when people absolutely do not give a damn. Thank God, though, on the positive side of this, thank God for the Hawaii Innocence Project. That's right. We, we got to shout them up and lift them up. Yes. Thank God for them. The man's still being there. And I hope he get a lot of money, even though they can never repay him for shooting them up with all them psychedelic drugs mm -hmm. and taking away almost three years of this man's life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna stay on top of that story because it's still developing, okay? Still developing. Um, I was alerted to this by one of our viewers. This was one of those WTF stories. Uh, there's a popular TikToker, let's put his picture up. Um, his name is Key Reeves. Um, he would give people a behind the scenes look at what it means to be a federal agent. Um, he had everything from a badge to a firearm, uniform, everything you expect from an enforcement officer. Except the man is no federal agent whatsoever. According to the reports, his real name is um, Riel Devin Simmons, 52 years of age, has a history of impersonating federal agents and military service. Let's put this picture up again. Okay, this story gets really, really deep and complex and convoluted. But let's go, let's go to the other picture um, from the US Attorney's Office. That, that's, yeah, okay. So he would have all of this behind the scenes of what it means to be a federal agent, had a lot of followers on TikTok. Uh, members of law enforcement followed him, you know, general public. They all thought it was legit. They thought it was 100%. And then he got exposed. Now, how did this happen? A TikToker from Georgia referred to as a witness in the case and with whom he struck a romantic relationship provided the tip to expose the con. In August, a TikTok comment caught the witness's eye. The user claimed Simmons was impersonating a police officer again. Simmons made his account private at that point, but the witness reached out to the user for more information. The TikTok user provided the witness information about Simmons previous run ins with the law in Colorado. The witness found it believable and reported Simmons to the FBI, keeping this from Simmons as he continued to post about his career as a federal agent. Some more details, Mr. Simmons of Dodge Center is accused of impersonating a US Department of Homeland Security agent. And the US, uh, the US Attorney's Office District of Minnesota announced. The complaint says Simmons used a profile photo that showed him wearing law enforcement gear and made several posts displaying law enforcement equipment, badges and firearms and referring explicitly and implicitly to himself as a federal agent. But employment records show Simmons never has been and is not working for the law enforcement agency. In fact, he's actually employed at a manufacturing plant via a temp agency. And even on his job application lied about working for the US government. Um, the allegations according to the report, it is part of a long string of incidents in which he manipulated individuals to believe that this is what he did. Um, why, why this baffles the hell out of me? Nina, can you make any sense of somebody allegedly doing this? I, I try not to enter the mind of a madman, Doc. <laughs> I don't wanna get stuck in there. No, not at all. Um, yeah, so be on the lookout for the guy because uh, they think that he may have conned other people and uh, you know, it's just sad, really sad. Out of everything you can pretend to be a cop, okay. All right, Sister Turner, always good to have you on the show. Uh, tell people how they can follow you, check you out, all of that good stuff. At Nina Turner on Twitter, Nina Turner Ohio on the gram. Thank you so much for everything. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other and take care of the planet. Remember the truth is always indisputable. <laughs>